morning, everyone. I'm Governor Doug Burgum. Along with uh, our Congressman and Vivek, uh, we're here today to offer some observations of firsthand. I think uh, one thing that we've all known is this was a sham trial, but when you have an opportunity to see it up close uh, and personal, you can see it's actually a scam trial. When you've got a, a, a judge that's a donor to Biden, you've got prosecutors that are supporters of Biden, and then you've got, a, you've got relatives of the judge uh, that are benefiting financially directly uh, from this trial and that information. Uh, and then you've got a, the star witness uh, is a serial perjurer. Then you have to ask yourself, what is this all about? And I think the only conclusion, of course, is that it's election interference and it's tying up the president uh, from being out on the campaign trail. And of course, uh, we know that from the polls that have come out, uh, even from the New York Times, Rasmussen Interactive this week, uh, President Trump is leading all over the country. And the conclusion you could draw from that is the American people have already acquitted Donald Trump because the things that, that they're concerned about, inflation, crime, the border, the economy, all of these things, President Trump is leading by huge double digits versus Joe Biden. And the sooner that this uh, scam trial can be concluded, uh, the sooner that the president can get back to getting out campaigning and talking to the American people about the issues that matter to them. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to the Congressman, then Vivek. Uh, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of America, this, this trial is a joke. This thing is a farce. We were in there all morning. Uh, Michael Cohen basically sat there and said, yeah, he invoiced legal expenses. The Trump campaign, the Trump organization, not the campaign, paid out money in legal expenses. Where's the crime? There is no crime. The only crime that is happening here is this Democrat judge and the Democrat Party prosecuting their political rival right in the middle of a presidential election. The crime here is that the issues facing our nation are not being addressed by the Democrats, but they want to go after Donald Trump. And there's nothing wrong. There's nothing that has been wrong here. Nothing, nothing that has been done uh, poorly by President Trump. The only thing that's being done wrong is by this judge. His daughter's making money raising money for Democrats and all of the fundraising emails and all the fundraising things are about this trial that his daughter is using. He won't recuse himself. This is a travesty of justice. This is a misuse of the justice system. And look around New York. New York's got plenty of issues. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. You have all of NYPD's finest down here because of this travesty going on in that courtroom. Meanwhile, the citizens of New York are less safe and the district attorney in New York is not prosecuting real crime. He's a Soros-backed DA going after his chief political rival in Donald Trump. America is better than this. And so unfortunately, it's going to take the American people this November to let their voices be heard on this travesty of justice that's occurring and making sure that Donald Trump is the 47th president of the United States. I've never seen anything like it. This is a joke. It is a farce. It is a travesty. We are better than this as Americans. And unfortunately, the Democrat Party has, loved, has lost their ever-loving minds. And so it's going to take the American people to remind them that justice is supposed to be blind. It is not supposed to be going after political opponents and political rivals. With that, I'll turn it over to my colleague from Florida, Congressman Corey Mills. Thank you so much. What have we learned here today? What we've learned is that Michael Cohen, who has no credibility, who has purged himself multiple times, who has zero integrity, has actually admitted to defrauding the Trump organization. He has listed his invoice as being an actual legal precedent where, in fact, he's now claiming that it's something other than that and that he knowingly and fraudulently put that forward. Look, as we talked about, why do they want this trial to continue? Well, they want it to continue because this is the fundraising source for Adam Schiff, for Biden, and for the Democrat opponents. This is nothing more than election interference at its finest. You are seeing where the weaponization of what was the Department of Justice, now the Department of Injustice, has continued to be utilized against the American people and against the President of the United States. I will tell you right now, the same way that I stand here steadfast behind our President, I know that America stands with him as well. They see this sham indictment, they see this for what it is without any actual substance whatsoever. Keep in mind, they keep actually talking about the FEC violations 
But when you're utilizing personal funds or you're utilizing a trust, that is not campaign funding. There is no violation, which is why the FEC never actually even pursued this. And so I think the American people see this for what it is. They want to keep President Trump off the campaign trail. They're seeing what's happening in the swing states across America, and they're seeing exactly this is draining down assets and resources that can be utilized by the president to continue to forge ahead, to build a stronger economy, to secure our border, and to get our nation back on track. This is a sham, and that is the only thing this is. Michael Cohen has no credibility, no integrity, and this is weaponization against our president. Thank you. I want to thank my colleagues, Governor Burgum, Congressman Mills, and Congressman Donalds for laying out the political backdrop here. This is a politicized persecution that is nakedly apparent. What I want to do is dive a little bit deeper into what we actually learned today in that courtroom. What do we see in there? First of all, I learned a lot from being in there in person. It is one of the most depressing places I have been in my life, but it is fitting because the only thing more depressing than the environment of that courtroom is what's actually happening in there. It's straight out of a Kafka novel. The prosecution's main strategy appears to be to bore the jurors into submission. And if you look in that direction, sadly, it may appear to actually be working. Now, I would like for anybody, anybody here in the press, anybody at home, anybody in MSNBC or the media afterwards, to clearly state what exactly is the crime that Donald Trump committed. Oh, wait. We have not heard a good answer to that question. It has been vague until today. You heard Michael Cohen's testimony, after which I would say it is less clear than ever what that crime actually was. They'll say falsifying business records. Well, let's look at who did we learn falsified business records today? Yet, what, hour, two hours felt like it could have been seven hours of Michael Cohen talking about how he falsified business records. Okay, so you have a guy who has been a perjurer in the past that is now saying he falsified business records. What is the crime that Donald Trump committed? Now, it appears to be what they might allege is some sort of bookkeeping error or whatever. The real bookkeeping that we need accounting of is Judge Merchant's own family member collecting millions of dollars as a Democratic operative using the existence of this trial as a fundraising ploy for Democrats. This is unconscionable. Imagine if the same shoe fit the other foot. Imagine if it was Joe Biden that was on trial. You had a Republican judge whose son was collecting millions of dollars as a Republican operative. What would you all be saying? This would not be justice. This is injustice at its worst. So let's let's go even a layer deeper, right? Because well, let's go let's go even a layer deeper. Actually, the alleged crime here is supposedly they try to point to this every day that he does not actually use campaign funds, that he used personal funds. Well, let's get this straight. Suppose Donald Trump had used campaign funds to make a personal expense. They'd be going after him for that. So if they're going to get him going or they're going to get him coming, that is the best proof that this is a politicized sham. Let's go through it piece by piece. If you tell somebody to go buy you a suit and you want to look good on television because that'll affect the voters, the way voters vote for you, you know what? They prosecute politicians if they use campaign funds to buy a suit. If they say, go get a haircut, if you use campaign funds to get a haircut because you want to look good to the voters, they will actually prosecute you for using campaign funds for a personal expense. Yet the entire legal theory of this in case, the whole case that Alvin Bragg has brought depends on one premise for them to charge this as a felony, is that Donald Trump somehow should have used campaign funds to make an allegedly personal payment. Yet if he had done that, their case against him would be even stronger. This is garbage. That is the best proof that you have that if they're going to get him going or get him coming, it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. This is a sham. This is not the United States of America. This is some third rate banana republic. If this were happening in another country, we would be laughing at them as a sham democracy. I am ashamed as an American citizen to sit here in a courtroom watching the former leader of the free world, and let's be honest, likely next leader of the free world, sitting with the indignity in this dingy third rate courtroom with fourth rate, fourth rate prosecutors and a fifth rate lawyer on the stand as a witness who actually is violating attorney-client privilege left and right. Nobody's even talking about that. So this is a shame, shame on the spirit in our country's history, but we will get through it and be stronger because you know who ultimately actually cast the vote on this case? It's not just the jurors in that jury box. It's every one of you at home. It's every American who votes this November to say no to the weaponization of justice. And if you're at home, you may say, you know what? I don't agree with everything Donald Trump's ever said. 
You know what? I may not agree with some of his policies even, even though they were great policies for four years. But you do agree, whether you are Democrat or Republican or black or white or gay or straight or man or woman, that our justice system should be blind to politics. Yes. That regardless of whether your last name is Biden or Trump, regardless of whether you've been a politician or not, you get a fair shake in our own legal system. And when you have a prosecutor who campaign on the pledge of going after Trump and then keeps his campaign pledge, when you have a judge whose kids are collecting money from Democratic operatives by fundraising off the very trial that that judge is presiding over and then telling the U.S. president that he's subject to a gag order, that he can't talk about it, that is not justice. That is a bastardization of what this country was founded on. And I'm here and all of us are here as friends of Donald Trump supporting him in our personal capacity, sharing our opinions. That's why we're here today. But I hope every American at home who isn't able to be in that courtroom is able to see what's actually happening there. And when you do, we will have a landslide of historic proportion this November if every American understands the injustice that's playing out in that courtroom today. So may God bless our country. I pray for our future. And let's pray for our country being stronger on the other side of this disgusting sham politician prosecution. Doug, I'm going to close this out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Vivek. Thank you, Congressman.